Have you been looking at getting into the C4FM Fusion by Yesu, but don't want to spend a ton of money on either the FTM 100 or 400? Then the FTM 7250 might be just the thing for you. And we'll take a look at it and how to program it right after this. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time on this channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. And don't forget to click on that bell. That way you'll be notified each time I upload a video. This radio comes with all the usual items, mounting bracket, owner's manual, the infamous Yatsu sticker, DTMF mic, power cord. I've already put a Anderson power poles on this one, a programming cable, and the usual mounting hardware, spare fuses, and mic holder. This radio has a front firing speaker, that's your power button, VFO and memory, selector knob, volume, microphone jack. Get your data port, external speaker, power, and antenna. This radio does seem to have some good weight behind it. The only drawback is the front face panel does not separate. A little bit about this radio, it's a 2 meter 440 radio, it does up to 50 watts, has three steps for that, 5, 25, and 50. Now according to the manual, the dimensions of this without the knobs and fan is 6.1 inches by 1.7 inches by 5.7 inches, which in metric, 155 by 42 by 145.5 millimeters. Weighs about 2.86 pounds or 1.3 kilograms. Now the memory for this radio, there's 199 basic memory channels, six home channels, 10 sets of band edge memories, also known as programmable memory scan. Okay, let's power this thing up and get started. First thing you have to do is enter your call sign. To do that, you can use the hand mic to scroll through for the letters. The only problem is like, take number six for example. Each time you push you'll get a different letter, M, N, or O, but it will never show up on a six. Not sure why. So I'm just gonna use the frequency knob. My call sign, WJ6F. To advance one, you push the VFO memory. To go back one, use band squelch. And once you've got all the call sign letters in there, just push megahertz setup for about one second to lock it in. That brings you back. Okay, before I get started inputting any repeaters or other frequencies, I'd like to run through the menu real quick and set up a few things. The way you access the menu on here is you press and hold the megahertz setup button for about a second. The first one you come to is auto power off. To get in there, press it real quick. Default is off. And you can set it from anywhere from a half an hour all the way up to 12 hour in half hour increments. I usually set mine for a half an hour. Press it real quick and it takes you back to the menu. Now the beep keyer, that enables and disables the key beeper. I don't mind it being on, I just have to adjust the volume when we get up here to number five. This only gives you two choices, high, low. The next one, number nine, that'll tell you what your voltage is that you're running. Right now we're getting 13.2 volts from my 12 volt, 20 amp hour bio and O battery. And you can have that as an opening message. Number 23, you can set your, how bright you want your panel. You know, you have four choices on there. I'll just leave it at four. Mic gain, 
I usually set mine as high as it'll go since I tend to be a soft talker. Then up at 53, we have the weather alert. Default is off. I choose on. Even though I live in Southern California and we don't have much weather out here, you never know. And then if you ever change your call sign, 57 will allow you to do that. To exit the menu, just press and hold again. That will take you right back out. If you need to adjust the squelch, all you have to do is press and hold band squelch for about a second. And you can adjust it from zero all the way to 15. Default is one. Once you've got it set to where you want, just press and hold again. That'll take you right back out. To change the transmit power on the radio, on the microphone, you press the D button. And you can either use the up and down buttons on the microphone, or you can use the frequency tuning knob. The default is high. We're going to set it for low. Then once you're done, press D and that takes you back out. We've already set the weather alert function in the radio, but if you want to just listen to the radio report real quick while you're out and about, just press and the P4 on the microphone and you have 10 different channels to choose from. Okay, now I'm going to input a simplex frequency into this radio. I'm already in the VFO, but if you're not, just press VFO memory button right here to get there. I'm going to enter 146520 for the national calling frequency. Use the hand mic to do that. Once you have the frequency input, go ahead and press and hold the VFO memory button. Now, if you have a blinking, it says MR3. Since it's blinking, that means that slot is empty. If it's not blinking, like MR2, number two is not blinking, that means there's already a frequency in that slot. Now, if you want to write over it, just hit it again for about a second. It's going to ask you, do you want to write it? Press and hold again. And then it takes you to where you can put your alphanumeric tag. I'm going to go and do NAT call for national calling. And then once you've got all the letters in you want, press and hold VFO memory button for about a second. That takes you out. And press it again. And there you go. And I'm going to input a repeater into the memory. First go to press your VFO memory button, take you out of the memory and into VFO. Frequency we're going to use is 145160. Now to set your tone up, you're going to go ahead and press the megahertz setup to take you into the memory. You go to item number 44. Press megahertz setup again. And here's where you choose it. The default is off, but in this case we want tone. Press megahertz setup to get back out of it. Then we're going to go to menu item 47 to choose the tone frequency. In this case it's 156.7. Press and hold to take you back. Now once you have everything input, press and hold the VFO memory. Choose the slot you want to put it in. Press VFO memory again, that allows you to put the alphanumeric tag in. 
In this case, it's Newport. Once you have everything in there that you want, press and hold the VFO memory button again. And there you are. Now let's see if anybody's out there and make sure we've got this repeater set up right. Anyone available for a signal report? WJ6F trying out a new radio. Now uh, we did get the repeater to come back to us and acknowledge, but okay, now I'm going to input one of the local fusion repeaters. Given its location, I may not be able to hit it from where I'm at, but we'll try. Switch over to VFO. The frequency is 445540. Set up the tone. And go to your frequency. In this case, it's one, two, three. Save this one on further on down the dial. Go ahead and enter your tag. This one is on Mount Wilson. There you go. I wonder if anyone out there can give me a signal report. WJ6F trying out a new radio. Yeah, it's WJ6F, Orange County, California. Trying out a new FTM7250 I just picked up. Yeah, you're making it sound good. I was in a noisy environment, so I just stepped outside, but uh, I'm, on, I'm on an FT2 handheld about a mile away from my nose, and as far as I can tell, um, you're kind of really good on the radio. Well, I'm uh, happy to hear you on here. It sounds like you're making it into that repeater just fine. All righty, well, I greatly appreciate the comeback. Take care. Hope to talk to you soon. KK7AIR. Okay. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them below. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you like this video, please hit thumbs up. Again, thanks for watching.